Neem een hot dooi. Deze het aan neem. Hoen we aan neem aan een zon trons in een laraxor sarpoor. Hier gaat, laat gaat weer. Maar ga gaan hier ravel. Waar we bonen hoos in aan met kamelerie. Gaat met ons. By the grace of God, your days are numbered. Hello everybody, welcome back to the Civ 5 AI only backwards colonization. I almost forgot what it was called there. Anyways, two things have happened right off the bat. So Hiawatha has completed the Great Lighthouse, makes him even more powerful. And um, the Chichen Itza, I believe, has been completed by Sitting Bull. So, I'm going to find out what the Great Lighthouse and the Chichen Itza do in this game. Because I don't really memorize a lot of the features of the things in it. Especially when I'm not actually playing. I don't know exactly what these things are because you can't really see from right here. From like right in the game. Um if like if another if another sieve gets it, so going to look up the Great Lighthouse, was it? Great Lighthouse. Alright, so all military naval units receive plus one movement and plus one sight provides a free lighthouse in the city in which it is built and it must be built on the, and the city must be built on the coast and it gives you one great or oh, I don't know anyways that's actually pretty cool and alright so Pocatello has made peace with Henry Morgan and also what does the Chichen Itza do I'll look that up when we change the turns so I never really got any feedback as, uh, um, on the topic of if you guys want to see background music so I decided that I just would this because. <laughs> so, <clears throat> anyways, here's what Chichen Itza does. Length of Golden Age increased by 50% and plus 4 happiness. So I'm guessing you don't get a Golden Age, but when you do get one, it increases the length by 50%, so that's pretty cool. And the happiness is cool as well. So, Crowfoot of the Blackfoot has made peace with Sitting Bull and Montezuma. And I made the window here a bit smaller. I'm seeing if that changes the quality at all. And if it looks really cruddy, then I'll go back to how it was. So anyways, Pocatello has completed the Hanging Gardens, but even more importantly, the Nazca have founded a religion. Um, don't know exactly how to pronounce that, but I have a feeling that that might be like an actual religion that they might have done. Because there was a, a lot of these civs actually founded religions that they actually founded in real life. So maybe what the mod does, it adds those preferred religions, like, because we have historical religions mod. So maybe what that mod does is it adds those historical religions to the list of preferred religions for a lot of those civs. So... That's what it is, I can't really... Not really finding any results. Sorry if I, my voice isn't the best, I don't know. I've had kind of like a sore throat, so yeah. Anyways, I can't find any results about that religion for some reason. But anyways, the Nazca founded it, and the Hanging Gardens as well, as I said, and have been built by Pocatello, I believe. So. Yeah, so the background music I'm using now, I got it from No Copyright Sounds. There's a lot, there's a lot of really cool tunes on there. And it's, it's also cool because you won't get any copyright strikes, don't have to worry about any of that. Um, but you just, there is a lot of stuff that you have to put in your description if you're giving credit. Like if I, have, like you have to, don't quote me on this, make sure you check if you're going to use their songs. But I think it's, you have to say that it's supplied by no copyright sound, you have to obviously have the name and artist of the song. You have to have the link to the video on no copyright sounds' YouTube channel. Then you also have to have all the social links that are available in that video's description of that artist. So if you have like five different songs from NCS in there, you have to, to do a lot. The, your description is going to be huge because you're going to have a ton of links and stuff that you have to put for each song. Um, but anyways, I guess that just makes up for the that. I mean, I'm just happy because I'm uh, that's it's a bunch of really good music that you won't get a copyright strike for. So, I don't mind doing all that as long as I can get some decent music that obviously won't um, get me copyright strikes and stuff, because you don't want copyright strikes, obviously. <laughs> so anyways, the Nazca built the Oracle. That's cool.
So yeah, again, these cities are actually not most of them. Some of them actually are, um, but a, a lot of them, or, or yeah, some of them actually are normal, like from the Civ, but other ones are actually adjusted based on the geographical area. So like you see Charleston, South Carolina, New York, you see Mobile, Alabama down here. Right, so this is the, happy, the happiest civs, um, the Nazca, the Buccaneers, the Iroquois, me, I don't, I don't know how. Uh, anyway, so I'll just pretend I'm not in there. So Nazca, Buccaneers, the Iroquois, the Sioux, and the Shoshone. And Barobader has been completed by Hiawatha, so, so again, they're even more powerful now. And uh, like when they cap, when the when um, Hiawatha captures a city that isn't named based on the geographical area, like say he captures this city, it will turn into it, the city name will change to a city that's in this relative area, because Memphis was not theirs. Either was Mobile, Alabama. They had different names. Then when they were captured, they actually changed the name that that city would have, um, that, that that city has in modern day times, in modern times. So. Anyways, the Shoshone have found a new religion, Pohak Antenna, in the city of Cheyenne. Wait, what? <clears throat> Why would they... F Why wasn't the religion founded in their capital? Why was it founded in Cheyenne? So Cheyenne is like the Jerusalem of, of the Americas. It's like a very holy place to a few religions now. So the Great Mosques of Jenna, I probably said that wrong, has been completed by the Maya. Lots of wonders in this episode. So the Buccaneers are pretty much taking up the very north of South America, just in front of these mountains here. Um, so these mountains could be very beneficial in terms of protection to the Nazca in the event that they were to go to war with the Buccaneers because not only are there jungle tiles, which is rough terrain, there's also mountains which you can't go over at all. More wonders, holy crap! So the Sioux have completed the Great Pyramids, Machu Picchu has been completed by the Shoshone, and the Shoshone have also completed Petra, so that's, that's just tons of wonders <laughs> in this episode. And there's some missionaries coming down from the Iroquois, what is their religion? It is Orenda. They're trying to- the Orenda's actually already pretty successful down here in South America, but it looks like they're gonna try to push out this- the leftovers of the Nazca Pantheon, and also they're gonna try to- try to prevent this new Nazca religion from spreading. So they want to be the dominant religion in the world, basically the point I'm trying to get across. And these guys have not even founded a Pantheon yet. Anyways, the Maya have enhanced Catholicism by adding new beliefs, and then I have had a Reformation belief to Catholicism. And uh, the Nazca have enhanced Pacaism. I probably said that wrong. Um, and they've also completed the Hagia Sophia. Another wonder in this same episode. And they're catching up on the score, in terms of score, with the Iroquois. They're miles, those two cities are miles ahead of everyone else. Now they complete another wonder, the Great Wall, and now they're ahead of Hiawatha, and that gives them even more protection. Not only is there rough terrain, not only is there mountains, there's also the Great Wall of China, and I have a Golden Age for no reason at all. But they are so protected right now. I will be surprised if they ever lose a city in the event of a war. And look at their capital, it's even more secure. Although it could potentially be vulnerable to ocean attacks, like ranged attacks, and then maybe people coming in, because then it's just too, uh, what is this? Maybe that's a Nazca thing. I guess, Geoglyph. Um, it, they could potentially be kind of vulnerable to attacks from, like, maybe units coming in from the sea, or maybe making their way around here. So although it is rough terrain, I mean, if they come in from the ocean, especially, it's just a couple blocks and then they're to the capital. Or a couple tiles, I mean. So. But yeah, anyways, I think I think the Great Wall of China may... Does the Great Wall of China 
uh, or the Great Wall only apply? The, do the effects only apply to where it actually visually is, or does it apply to the entire empire? I'm not sure about that. If you know, let me know in the comments. Like, if you don't understand what I mean, like, would the effects of the Great Wall of China work at these borders here, since even though they're not like actually inside it, and would they work here and here and stuff, since they're not actually inside the Great Wall? If you know the answer to that, let me know. Um, I've been wondering about that for a while. I guess I could just Google it. But, <laughs> anyways. If they just own this little road right here. This little forest road. Yeah, that, that could, like, cut off some transportation between the, uh, two buccaneer cities. They're just, they're just trolling them by taking that land. So these cities, whoa, this is a very diverse city here. Four religions in here. So I'd say like this south, the south of, of the United States and maybe like northern Mexico is like going to be the battleground where all of the religions kind of meet. And then you, and then this is like the very center. You have four religions in one city. Um, this, what, why is it not a holy city anymore? It was a holy city for that other religion now. For that other religion, now it's not. Oriental Orthodoxy is not very successful. I completely forgot about it. Okay, so this... I don't know if it's a glitch, but it was a holy city for two, for two religions a second ago. San Francisco has been occupied by the Aztec. Maybe that was in a peace deal. Because if it's still, because if they had captured it, it would not be all the way up at nine population. So I think it was something that happened in a peace deal. Were they ever at war with the Shoshone though? Or no, I don't even think that was a Shoshone. I think that was a Crowfoot city. I believe they were at war with the Crowfoot. And speaking of, or not with the Crowfoot, with the Blackfoot, but the leader's Crowfoot. It's confusing. Anyways, Crowfoot of the Blackfoot has completed Colossus. Yet another wonder in one episode. Oh my gosh. I wonder why the Buccaneers are so far behind on score. Interesting. I don't know. And the Maya actually are down to one city, and somehow they're that far above these guys who have four cities. Guess they have successful religion, that's probably the difference, the main difference. Because that religion, when you found a religion, it gets you a lot of points. Obviously score doesn't matter in the end, but just interesting. So was this in a peace deal kind of thing, or was this actually captured? Not sure. Oh, and a new city has been founded, Santiago de Cuba. It's been founded by the Iroquois. So that's where the Buccaneers could have settled. Or did I actually- didn't I move them? I think I moved- I think this is where the settlers were glitched, so I moved them. This is where they should have been. Um, they're- like, the Buccaneers were mainly in these Caribbean islands and, like, parts of Central America, so this isn't extremely accurate as to where they actually were. Um, oh well. A spy has been re recruited. That is cool. Hiawatha has entered the Renaissance era. So now we can check out what the different civs are doing. Why am I in a golden age though? I don't understand why that happened. I mean, <laughs> wh why? I don't, I don't get it. Whatever. Um, Alright, so where are we going to send this spy? Where's a place that we should probably want to check out? Let me, let me look. I'm gonna see what the Iroquois are gonna do, because they seem to be the powerhouse of the world. Seem to be a world power. So we should try to see what they're planning. If they're planning on going to war with maybe the Sioux or the Aztec, maybe the Shoshone even. Haven't seen any colonization yet, or any attempt at it. Um, maybe it's too early. It looks like they don't really have the, the deep sea sailing. 
but they look like they're ready to go and colonize so I think they know that there is that there is more land this way because they look like they're just right here ready to go I want to colonize but they can't because they don't have that technology yet so I think we will see quite a bit of colonization so yeah, the Iroquois are doing a very good job of spreading their religion. Although they're not winning the battle in like the... in this part of South America. They are winning in North... in North South America. But in the rest of it, not doing so. Whoa! Where did that come from? And there's a Buccaneer Settler as well! I never noticed these. There's two Aztec cities all the way down here. If they can build up a successful, I guess you could call it a colon colony. Um, it's on a different continent. I guess you could call it a colony technically, but yeah. If they can build up a strong colony here, that could be the sieve that could really, really do some damage potentially to the Nazca. And the Shoshone and the Iroquois have also discovered this land. And the Nazca have entered the Renaissance era, and Sitting Bull has completed Alhambra. So when is our spy? Two turns, he and he will establish surveillance in uh, New York. Then we can see what the Iroquois are up to. So again, sorry for not uploading this for a little, for a week. Um, I'm going on winter break soon, yes, <laughs> and I finished all of my finals and exams and stuff, so I'm really happy. Um, yeah, so anyways, let me know if you guys are having exams and if you're going into winter break soon, if you're, um, if you're, if you, if you are having exams at this time, are you, are you glad that, um, you're, bleh. My brain is exploding. If you're going on to winter break soon, let me know if you're excited and like, I don't know, what you're gonna do, maybe what holiday you celebrate, if it's Hanukkah, or if it's Christmas, or Kwanzaa, whatever. So, um, yeah. If you guys are going on to winter break soon, let me know in the comments. Winter break is awesome. As well, if you're having finals this week, leading up to winter break, let me know. Like, on a, I just exit out of something that I probably shouldn't have. Probably playing against someone. If you are, let me know on a one to ten scale how much you, one being you love them and ten being you hate them, how much you enjoy finals. So, or how much you hate finals. So, like a one would mean you love finals and ten would be you hate them. So, anyways, it's going to be next turn. I mean, I don't really mind them. They're not too bad. Easy, man. What? That was an accident. Anyways, um... Alright. Coming up at the end of the episode here in a few minutes. So this is another city that has quite a few religions in here. There's actually three religions in a pantheon, though. Whoa! I think they used a great, yeah, they used a great prophet, or maybe it was an inquisitor. I don't know if they have those yet, but it seems like they just completely. That's probably the great prophet. Seems like they just because they the Oriental Orthodoxy was not extremely successful, and all of a sudden it's the dominant religion in the city. Everyone is now a member of it. There's no other. Well, speak of the devil, there's now another religion in there. All right. <laughs> Anyways. Just as I say that, another religion pops into the city. Anyways, I was just gonna say, there's no other religions in there now, now there are. Anyways, the Nazca have completed Angkor Wat. The world's most wonderful people, alright? The ranks players by the number of wonders they've constructed. So, the only Sith that doesn't have a single one 
is Henry Morgan of the Buccaneers. So that might be another reason why they're so far down in the score. Um, anyways, so the Nazca have one, the Shoshone have three, the Sioux have three, the I Iroquois have two, the Blackfoot have one, the Maya have one, and the uh, Aztecs have one. Alright, so this is looking like a very powerful military here that the Iroquois have. It's like a pretty decent navy that the Aztecs have, and lots of composite bowmen for the uh, Mayans here. Anyways, speaking of the Mayans, they're being plotted against by the Iroquois, so I would be kind of afraid, although they don't really have any boats to escort their units, so they pretty much just have to sail across the sea, just their units by themselves, and when a unit like, a land unit is in the water, it's very vulnerable, so, um, if they don't get, if they, if they're going to declare war on the Mayans, they need to get boats to escort their units over here, or else they might lose a lot of them. Anyways, that's gonna do it for this episode, I'll see you all next time, keep on crashing the waves, bye-bye.